you guys, April Chapman here with the Standard of Truth podcast. And yes, hashtag you ain't black. Y'all can't see it, right? Y'all see my, y'all, when I tell you, I absolutely love this shirt. And I wore it because I felt that it was fitting for the occasion. What are we talking about? We are going to be talking about Juicy, Juicy Smollier, known as Jussie Smollett who, if you haven't heard, there has been a Fox Nation documentary that was released a couple of days ago. So I'm a little late. I'm always late to the party. But my goal is to cover this situation. um, And I want to do it right, right? I want to do it right. And I want to do it well. So let me bring you guys up to speed. You guys remember the faux hoax, right? That happened a few years ago where an actor Jesse Smollier, as I refer to him, claimed to have been viciously attacked, viciously attacked on the streets of Chirac at 2 a.m. in the morning by some white MAGA supporters, some white supremacists in sub-zero, sub-like negative 22 degree weather. They came for him. And um, if, you know, the, 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 uh, the award for the victim Olympics should go to anybody, Juicy was vying for the number one spot, but he did not get it. Why? Because as it turned out, Juicy was lying like a rug, right? There was no truth to any of the statements that he made. And it was discovered that it was all a hoax and that he did it to bolster his career and um, it's a shame. And I'm I'm joking about this, but y'all, this this was not funny. What, what people do not understand, um, and I think some people do, but depending on what side of the political aisle you land on, you would be hard pressed to disagree with me when I say that our country is divided. Our country is more divided now, post having a, a pseudo black president, than it's ever been before. The, the, the flames of just racial animosity are constantly stoked. Everybody is racist. If everybody's a racist, nobody's a racist. But these days, let the left tell it, racism is the biggest threat to Black people in this country today because racism is everywhere. It is under every rock just waiting to snatch you up by the neck and grip you in its, in its hands and not let go. That's the story that they want all of us to believe. But that's that's not what's really happening. In fact, what's really happening is I would say that we are living in one of the least, most least racist times um, ever in our American history. And part of that is because, y'all, let's just be honest, we got white folks out here scared, okay? White folks are walking on eggshells So much so because they don't want to be called a racist, even if they might have some partiality in their heart, which I believe, if we're all going to be honest, all of us, because we're fallen sons and daughters of Adam, all of us have a a, a teeny with a bit or some more than others of partiality in our hearts. That partiality could have been brewed from stereotypes that we have about other ethnicities. Right. It could be from how we were raised and it just could be us picking up our cues from the culture instead of from the word of God. But if you're a Christian, we know we're not supposed to have hatred in our hearts toward others who don't look like us and who don't share our ethnic reflection. We are not to hold partiality in our heart. Right. Because we're all image bearers of God and we all deserve dignity and respect. But we know that that's not always the case. But I would say most of the outrage that we see today, most of that outrage is manufactured. It is manufactured outrage. And the left, yes, I'm going to say it. The left does a very good job of constantly stoking the flames of imaginary racism in order to keep us divided, because that is what the goal of Marxism is. The goal of Marxism is to get us to abandon God. The government is God. And the revolution that has to happen, it doesn't come with guns and, 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 and wartime weapons. 
It is an ideological war where you keep segments and groups of people constantly fighting with one another to where the whole society will ultimately collapse. That's what we saw happen with the Juicy Smollier faux hoax. We saw our former first lady of the uh, United States, Michelle Obama, and our current Vice President Kamala Harris fight and pull strings to make sure that Juicy was not held accountable. They participated in stoking the flames of this fake hoax and this fake outrage. Now, I have a theory. I believe that they knew it was fake. And I do believe that on some level, they had probably had something to do with it. I can't prove it. This is just pure speculation on my part. Things that I believe allegedly may have happened behind the scenes. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that the left is eerily silent about this new documentary that has hit the airwaves on Fox Nation. I'm actually glad that Fox Nation decided to do a documentary on this situation because the truth needed to be exposed. The left has tried to suppress this truth to and make us believe that this really didn't happen and that Juicy was railroaded. Nothing happened to Juicy, right? Nothing, nothing that should have happened to him to truly hold him accountable for his actions. That didn't happen. But what I will say is that white folks are definitely scarred. They are scarred and no one wants to be labeled a racist. So white people will go out of their way to prove that they're not racist. And I don't, I don't agree with that either. My thing is, listen, you don't need to be scared to say how you feel. Why? Members of my community, we ain't afraid to say how we feel when a black person doesn't, doesn't feel peachy keen about a white person. They will just come out and say it and dare someone to push back. But right now, it is socially acceptable to, 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 to say mean and hurtful and disparaging things about white people with impunity. There's just, there's no consequences. No one is ever held accountable for their actions. They are allowed to spew their hatred. So I'm not convinced when people say we're living in one of the most racist times. It's like, it ain't real racism. Does real racism exist? Absolutely. I'm sure there are white supremacists and skinheads still in this country, but, um, no one is experiencing racism on such a level that they are uh, unable to work and they are just triggered and they are just experiencing, you know, an unprecedented amount of trauma because something that some white person has done to them, that's not happening. So what I want to do, what I want to talk about, why am I talking about this? Well, one, y'all see my shirt when, you know, our current, Commander-in-Chief made the comments that, you know, if you don't vote for me, you ain't Black. To me, that was the epitome of a white supremacist statement, where someone literally tried to hold a vote over your head and connect your vote for him to the very essence of who you are, which is how our Creator made us, if you're Black. Like, I can't wash this melon and all. I can't rinse it off. I can't. It is. It's ingrained in me because it's who I am. And we actually had someone come out their mouth to tell us that if we didn't vote for him, not because his policies were good, but just if you, you don't vote for me, you ain't black. To me, that was the epitome of white supremacy. But what did people who look like me do? They voted. For him anyway. Why? Because of the hatred in their hearts against someone that they thought was the enemy, but whose policies say what you want, agree or disagree, whose policies overall were better for people who look like me. So what I want to talk about is this documentary is out. And yes, I paid five dollars and ninety-nine cents for a free seven-day trial to Fox Nation so that I could watch it. I wanted to see it. Yes, I did. And y'all know I'm cheap. So for me to spend money on something, that means I really wanted to see it. And I would encourage you to go ahead and see it too, because it's being told from the vantage point of those who have investigated this story. 
And then it's something interesting is that the actual guys who were hired to uh, enact this crime against Juicy, they tell their side of the story. And um, I had some issues, you know, for the most part, I think it was well done. I think it's interesting. I thought it was funny. Um, Juicy would have been better off him and his friends turning that whole situation instead of actually going through with it and 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 reporting a hate crime they should have just reenacted it like it was a parody like it was funny no one really believed it well people who internalize and see racism under every corner probably believe it but those of us who are like dude two white dudes in mega hats are not gonna be in chicago on the coldest night of the year yelling it's mega country that did not happen it just didn't happen. Um, but the documentary is out. It was absolutely funny yet sad at the same time because it demonstrated just how far one our country has gone and just how self-absorbed and narcissistic our country has become. It reminds me of the passage in 2 Timothy and 2 Timothy chapter 3, where it talks about godlessness in the last days. And it says, but understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. So here's what I want to say <clears throat> about that um, situation. Juicy Smollier demonstrated um, he was so absorbed with himself and the left, the elite of of the bunch um, of the elite of this country is what I want to say is that they thirst for money and power so much so that they're willing to destroy this country, right? Um, for their own selfish gain and at your expense. Um, I would agree that neither the left nor the right truly care about you as a person. There might be individuals on either side that do, but in the macro sense, y'all know how I do on this channel. I don't talk about, you know, I'm talking in the macro. Neither side cares about you at all. It, that's been demonstrated in legislation or lack of legislation that should be passed, that should be to help the American people. That is not happening. There is an elite group that. All they want is money and power, and they will literally destroy and tear down this country at your expense for the sake of their own selfish gain. So when I see in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, chapter 3, when the scriptures are talking about lovers of self, Juicy loved himself so much that to advance his career, he was willing to commit a fake hate crime a fake hate crime, and then to do it at the expense of stoking the flames of ethnic partiality, racism, and division in a country that's already divided and the, 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 uh, the lines of which our country is divided are not even legitimate divisions. They're manufactured ones. They are constantly spewing out rhetoric to keep us all on edge and against one another by crying racism under every rock, which causes white people to end up being defensive. And then it also starts breeding resentment, right? Like if you're a white person and somebody keeps telling you, you know, you're racist just because you're white, like you can't do anything about it. It's just your whiteness is the problem. It's only but so much of that type of rhetoric that a person can take before they start actually feelings that weren't there before. They actually start to breed feelings of resentment and, 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 and hatred in their heart toward people who really, just because they don't look like them, 
And it may not be directed toward a person that actually said it or did something toward them, but they start to grow and develop this hatred in their heart toward an entire people group because that's the going narrative. And they're like, why try? Why try to treat everyone as an individual and to take that individual on at face value and on the basis of how they are interacting with me if I can't win no matter what I do or what I say, right? We've allowed the left to do this and they never apologize for it. They never come forward and denounce the foolishness that their side does. They never do it. They never accept accountability for it because they're doing what the enemy of our soul wants them to do, which is to constantly stoke division and to keep mess going. You need to be aware of the, 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 the wiles of the enemy and how he moves and function. He's a liar and he's been a liar from the beginning, right? And that's just, that's just what he does. But I want to say that not only is Racism, yes, it is a thing, right? Because it's a sin. It's a sin of the heart. It's hatred in your heart toward others on the basis of part- uh, on the basis of ethnicity, right? So of course that sin still exists, right? And I believe that that is a sin that Christ died for, and you can be delivered and saved. From that sin, along with all the other sins that we can list, right? I don't believe that we need to manufacture diversity and inclusion in order to stamp out the sin of racism. You can't stamp out the sin of racism no more than you can stamp out the sin of adultery or fornication or murder. The sin is not going anywhere. What I believe needs to happen is that Christians need to stand in their rightful place as the ones who herald the message of the gospel and let people know that all of the problems that you see in the world, the answer is justification by grace through faith in the person and work of Jesus. We need to give out the gospel because there's no political party that can fix this. This is a sin issue, right? This is a work of the flesh. Only the gospel of Jesus can take sinners who have hatred in their heart, give them a new heart, make them alive in Christ Jesus and give them a new heart to where the people that they once hated, they now love and can gaze upon them as that's my sister in the Lord or that's my brother in the Lord. Yes, we look different and we're of a different ethnicity, but the gospel of Jesus is what reconciles us to one another. So Juicy, listen, I don't know if you're ever going to see this. Yes, we laughed, we joked, um, but I personally do not believe that you were held accountable and that the punishment and judgment that you received this side of heaven, I do not believe that it was adequate based on the severity of the crime that you committed. But here's my message for you. Juicy, Jesse, Mr. Smolier, my message for you is that you too, unless you repent, you will likewise perish and die in your sin. Because the sin of sodomy and homosexuality, that's not your, that's your issue, right? That's your work of the flesh. That is the, the besetting sin that separates you from a holy God. But it's not your only sin. We, 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 we all have, we're all sinners in need of a savior. And so the same gospel that took me a wretched sinner who has no righteousness of her own, that same gospel can rescue you and save you from your sin and clean you up and make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. You don't have to be a pawn. For the Democratic Party anymore. You don't have to wallow in your wickedness and your and, and, and your evil deeds. You don't need to do that anymore. You can be made alive in Christ Jesus and you can walk in the light. You don't have to manufacture these types of stories in an effort to gain notoriety and attention. Because 
our Savior who died for us, there is an eternal hope that awaits us. And when we get our glorified bodies, we will reign in heaven with him. And that's better than anything that this world could ever offer you. The money, a new show, the fame, the success, all of that pales in comparison to what awaits those who by faith have trusted in Jesus of Nazareth. So that's my message for you, Juicy. But at the end of the day, I want to, I'm a Christian, right? So I don't, I don't hide my faith in the Lord Jesus. That's who I am. But I'm also a conservative. That means I align socially and politically with the right. That is no secret. You spend any amount of time on my channel, you'll learn that about me. And what I want to say is the fact that I've been to a MAGA rally, right? I've been to several of them. And um, I experienced more love, more respect, more treatment as a human being at a MAGA rally than what most people would expect because they assume for whatever reason, I don't know why the term MAGA is so triggering for some people, but I would argue that people are afraid of what they do not know because they build their opinions and they build their conclusions based on what the media tells them and not what is actually true. I've been to a MAGA rally. I've been to one with my children. I've been to one alone. I've been to one with my husband. And I was able to stand as a Black American patriot alongside other people who did not share my ethnic image. And we had a great time celebrating all of the beauty and wonderful opportunity that this country has afforded us. We all come from different backgrounds. Some of us poor, some of us dirt, dirt poor, some of us from the hood, some of us from the trailer park, some of us from middle-class America. We were all from different walks of life. And we stood there united as Americans because this country is great. And I, 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 it makes me sad that there are people that I even know, and people that may even subscribe to this channel that are so triggered by four letter, letters, MAGA, make America great again, because they're too blinded by hatred in their heart. Now, here's what I didn't say. I didn't say uh, Trump was savior. I didn't say that Trump is the answer to all of our problems. He is a fallen, sinful man, and if he don't repent, he too will likewise perish and die in his sin. But what I will not do, what I will not do is, is be intellectually dishonest and, and say that the Trump presidency was not an amazing time politically speaking from a policy perspective. I know y'all got selective here. Y'all gonna hear something else and then I'm gonna have to be in the comments and defend something I didn't say. I am talking about the policy, the policies under the Trump administration were good for this country. Here's what I did not say. I did not say Trump was Christian. I don't believe he's regenerate and born from above. I just don't believe that. But I can respect the policies. I can respect him as an entrepreneur. I'm going to be consistent. I admired the man when I was five because I'm from New York and he was our guy. And with all his arrogance, with all of his narcissism, that's sinful. What I cannot do is jump on the bandwagon with everybody else and say that the man was racist. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to allow an alternate narrative to be painted about MAGA supporters because, like I said, I've been to a Trump rally and I had the best time. I'm talking, I'm proud to be an American, kind of fun. Like, it was just 
fun. And I'm glad that I was able to step out of my comfort zone and get to know people who did not look like me and discovered that we are more the same than we are different. And that when you slice us in the skin to the white meat show, we all bleed the same red blood. So that is my commentary on the Juicy Smoothie documentary. I would encourage you to watch it. Uh, It will entertain you and it will just expose the wickedness of the left that has divided this country and that is continuing to divide this country because they are hungry for money and power. And at the root of all of it, it's just wickedness and deceit. And I need people to know that. So until next time, make America great again. And if you don't vote for Joe Biden, you ain't black.